بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful All praises be to Allah Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad His family and his companions My name is Ruba Dahoud Kiwar I am originally from Jordan. My parents are from Jordan. I was born in Denmark and then when I was five years old, uh, my parents decided to go back to Jordan because my father became a pastor in an evangelical church. We used to live in the second floor above the church. Literally, like the first floor is the church and the second floor, we that would be our house. That when they had any kind of uh, meetings or they were singing hymns or uh, talking on the pulpit, I would actually listen to every single word that they were saying downstairs. Uh, I was my father's right hand. I used to help him in the church uh, giving uh, lessons and biblical studies for the children and also I was in the youth program and so I was a happy camper in the church I didn't have anything to worry about when I became in the seventh grade I went to Islamic schools and so uh, I had my friends who were Muslims but I never thought about Islam they were very nice people and uh, you know they sometimes they would talk to me about Islam they wanted me to be converting to Islam but I never really thought about about it in any way. So uh, long story short, in 2002, we immigrated as a family uh, from Jordan to United States of America and we settled in Texas where my uncle is and he's also a pastor of the Arabic Baptist Church. So I used to help my uncle a little bit in the church and then I started working, going to school and so on. Uh, after a few months, we learned that my father was diagnosed with colon cancer and he died in 2003. Uh, probably this traumatic experience of having a father died uh, made me really think about life again and uh, start questioning about my faith and everything. The other thing is I have a cultural shock coming from Jordan, a country that only have Muslims and Christians in their population uh, to United States where they have all type of people from different backgrounds and different religions. That was uh, really made me think about uh, faith and about religions and about humankind and so on. So I started learning a little bit more uh, about religion. So I studied uh, Buddhism, I studied Hinduism, and then I started Sikhism, which was like probably the closest to what like I like but I didn't want to become a Sikh because it was uh, mostly um, you know for Punjabi and Indians which now I know that it is not true but this is how it started anyway then I went to college and then when I was in college I met with some friends who were Muslims and they spoke my language and uh, we started talking a little bit about Christianity and Islam and what really triggered it is uh, one of the guys uh, who was with us, he came telling us that he became a Shia. So my friends were so angry and they were like debating with him and discussing with him between Sunni and Shia. And I was just sitting there listening to them as a Christian person. I was the only Christian there and I was like, this is my opportunity to make them Christian to make them accept Jesus Christ as their savior as they say so I start talking to them about Christianity and uh, the debate uh, took another route from Sunni and Shia to Christian and Muslim so they start like debating with me and uh, you know talking to me about uh, you know telling me about Islam and so on so they were asking me different questions that um, I know the answer because I was programmed this to answer this way. For example, if they tell me where did Jesus say that he's God in the Bible, I would tell them, hey, he said that he didn't say it like in, uh, uh, you know, in clear way. But he said, for example, that, uh, oh, Jesus said that I am and the father are one. So that means uh, the father and 
Jesus or God, so Jesus is God and so on. So that was like a way that they taught us in the church how to answer the misconceptions that the Muslims throw on the Christians. So that also gave me the opportunity to think a little bit more about it and to start to search my soul uh, as we speak. So they were like telling me questions and uh, I would answer them the way that I was learned to answer. But again, when I go home, I'm actually thinking about the question and is what I said uh, was what I said was the right thing or not. Um, then, you know, my mom was coming from Jordan and my mom doesn't like me to be hanging out with Muslims. So I told them, hey, listen, guys, I can't talk to you anymore. I need to go. So uh, I stopped talking to them for a while. But at home, I would be thinking about them and I would be thinking about the questions that they were asking me about Jesus Christ and his divinity and uh, about the Old Testament and the New Testament and so on. So I said, you know what, I need to go back and read the Bible. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe my answer was not sufficient enough. So I need to, I need some answers. Um, I said, I'm going to be reading only the uh, the teachings of Jesus and uh, the biography of Jesus and his teachings. Maybe I will find something. I will, maybe I will find some answers. And that's what I actually did. I started reading from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and uh, going from one gospel to another. And then once I got to John, I was really worried that everything that I'm reading is different than what the t the church taught me. So for example, Jesus never said about himself, God. It didn't appear to me that he was actually God just because he raised the dead or just because he was a good man. Because all the prophets in the Old Testament, they were good people and they also raised the dead just like Jesus did. And so um, the other thing is like, you know, in the Old Testament, God was very clear when he spoke to the people of Israel and he told them that I am God and don't worship any other gods but me and I am the only true God. However, in the New Testament, Jesus never said I am God. He never said I am the true God. He never said come and worship me. He never asked for anybody to worship him. So that really made me think about it in a way that, okay, well then, why am I worshiping Jesus then? What is the reason for me to stay uh, in my religion? And in that process, I started like forming my own religion, believing that there is only one God and that Jesus is only a messenger of God. Until I reached to John 17, 3, which really was the turning point for me. And so Jesus says while he's praying, and that's another question that I had is, if Jesus was God, why would Jesus be praying? Why does he need to be praying? If he's God, then he shouldn't be like praying to himself, for example. And so uh, that made me think about it. And then Jesus said in 17.3 that this is the eternal life. The eternal life is the kingdom of heaven. And he said, this is the eternal life to know you, the father, as you, the only one God, as he is saying that there is only one true God and that Jesus Christ is the messenger of God. So basically he's saying that there is only one God worthy to be worshiped and that Jesus is sent from God. He is a messenger of God. So that was really a turning point for me and I said, wow, you know, where did we get this Bible from? I looked at the Bible and I started learning about the manuscripts and I found that even the manuscripts um, are written by anonymous. Nobody knows who wrote them. And uh, um, that was a shock for me. After this, I um, decided that I wanted to read the Quran. And I said, I'm going to read the Quran and I'm going to find mistakes in the Quran 
And I'm going to tell the people, the, my friend, the Muslim friends, that, hey, look, your Quran has mistakes. So you can't come and mock my religion and say that my religion is not true. So I didn't have a Quran really at home. So I would stay in the uh, computer lab in college and I would uh, open on the website and start learning and reading the Quran. And sometimes I would do some search about what does the Quran say about Jesus, for example. So I go to the search and write uh, Jesus Christ uh, in the website of the Quran and so on. So I was amazed and shocked on the numbers of the accounts that the Quran mentions Jesus Christ, Jesus the son of Mary. And I was shocked how many times that it mentions also Mary, peace be upon her. There were so many stories about Jesus. One of them that really uh, amazed me that this story is actually in the Quran, but it is not mentioned in the Bible, where Jesus was a baby and uh, uh, he was between the arms of Mary, his mother. And, and then she comes in front of the Jews and the Jews start slandering her. So all what she does is she points at Jesus, baby Jesus, and uh, Jesus speaks. And the first thing he says, Inni Abdullah, that means I am the servant of Allah. That was a wow, like, you know. So that was the first thing that Jesus says and comes out of his mouth since he was a baby, that he is a servant of God and that he is not God. Um, and then I kept reading. I started with Al-Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran. And then I went to Surat Al-Baqarah, which is the second chapter, and then the third chapter, and so on, until I, f I got to the fifth chapter. And while I was reading, I was like, there is no way that this book is actually a handmade. There is no way that someone made this book. It has to be from God. And then I stumbled on chapter 5, verse 82, where it says that, the closest people to the believers are the ones who say that they are Christians. That because they are humble, they are not arrogant, and they have priests and pastors. And that was really uh, like a, let's say that I was just looking for just a little push to go and do my Shahada because I could not find any mistake, that's for one. And second, that uh, every time I try to abandon the Quran and leave it, something just brings me back to it. And this ayah made me really think about my father because my father is a pastor. He was very humble. He was a, a great man. He was um, a very generous man and made me really think about him. And I was like, subhanAllah. Then I read the very next verse in the Quran where it says that, and if they hear the verses of Allah or what it was revealed to them, their eyes start tearing and saying, Oh, our Lord, we have believed, write us among the witnesses. And immediately I start crying when I read this uh, verse and I was like, Oh Allah, write me among the witnesses, I believe. And I believed. I went to my friends and I told them I want to become a Muslim. And before I reached to them, I was in my car just uh, thinking about it. That's a big step that I'm going to be doing. What is my mom going to do? Uh, what are my brothers are going to say? What is the church going to say since I am a very active member in the church? They're going to be so angry from me. And I was crying and I was like, you know, asking Allah. I was very desperate and I told him, Oh Allah, if this is the right thing, then make it easy for me. If it's not the right thing, then let me just have an accident right now and let me die in a car accident. I just don't want to do the wrong thing. I don't want to go to hellfire. I want to do the right thing. And God made it so easy for me. I went to my friends and I told them, Hey, listen, I want to become a Muslim. One of them just laughed at me and he was like, oh, you're joking, right? 
because you said two months ago that if you became a Muslim or if you said your Shahada and you said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul, that doesn't make you a Muslim. And I said, no, I, I am really a Muslim. I really want to become a Muslim. And uh, I explained to them what happened to me and how I studied the Bible and so on. And one of them, he said, SubhanAllah, Allah loves you. And I said, why? And he said, because tomorrow is Ramadan. So now uh, I supposed to be fasting and, and learning the prayers all at once, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So yes, I did become a Muslim. It was uh, hard at the beginning because uh, when I asked for help from the mosque, nobody helped me. My mom and my brothers were very angry. I was abused physically and emotionally, verbally from them. Uh, I was homeless for a while. Um, I lost everything, but you know, I gained myself. I gained Allah. And uh, for the first five years, I became Muslim. I got married to a Muslim guy and um, I started learning the religion and I got my bachelor degree in Islamic studies. But then I got a divorce. And then after the divorce, what happened is I went down to Jordan to get married to somebody else who was not actually the right person for me again. And um, I went through a lot of problems, uh, a lot of pressure from the church in Jordan and a lot of pressure from some Muslims who accused me to be a spy uh, from United States and so on. Um, I went through a lot of hardships at that time, which really made me reach my rock bottom and I reached to real depression and uh, I wanted to commit suicide. At that time, I left Islam. But it wasn't for long, subhanAllah. Allah brought me back in a mysterious way, in a miraculous way, alhamdulillah. And I came back to Islam much stronger than before. And I looked at Islam in a whole different perspective. When I first became Muslim, I took the very strict path. I was very um, um, radical, let's say. And uh, everything was like, halal or haram and everything was just like black or white as they say but then when i came back to islam i decided that i want to take things easy and i wanted to learn on my pace uh, slowly and become a better muslim than just becoming a knowledgeable muslim without having real practical life in islam alhamdulillah uh, this experience really made me um a stronger person, a better Muslim. And not only that, uh, it made me help a lot of Muslims that, uh, especially new Muslims who are, who were in the same path like me. Uh, some of them, they have bad marriages. And so they decided they wanted to leave their Islamic life and wanted to go back to their old life. So I totally understand. Um, I helped by the will and by the success of Allah, a lot of women that they were going through what I went through. And uh, I helped a lot of non-Muslims to become a Muslim. And that's all by the help of Allah. And Alhamdulillah, right now I am just doing Dawah on my YouTube and uh, uh, t also teaching new Muslims. I make lectures for new Muslims, uh, teaching them the basics of Islam. I also do some lectures in uh, the Islam in the religious uh, interfaith between Christianity and Islam. And uh, I've done many debates with uh, well-known Christian scholars also from their Bibles, since I know the Bible very well. And Alhamdulillah, I also wrote a book called Dalil al-Tansir or the Evangelism Guide. And I have it in English also, it's called The Map. It is on my website that talks about evangelism and it talks about, uh, you know, how to combat evangelism in the Muslim countries and so on. So Alhamdulillah, I am uh, uh, much happier right now. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uh, made me pass a very big test and it was a very hard test but uh, Allah is good and he was with me all the time even when I left him Allah never abandoned me and he never left me and so here's my uh, takeaway uh, lesson or advice to the people is uh, never lose hope Allah is always with you 
And even if we can't find any doors open, just look up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always have his door open for you. And uh, there is no hardship without ease. And uh, Allah is always with you. And also for the non-Muslims, I also tell them to open their mind and accept others. Um, learn about other other people religion and learn about Islam because Islam means to submit to only one true God the God that he created us that he nothing like unto him um, Allah in Arabic and by the way Christian Arabs say about God Allah he is the one who created us and he's the one who sustains us and he he's neither male or female Allah does not look at our pictures and Allah does not look at our appearances but he scans our hearts and if Allah knows that you are a true seeker of the truth Allah will guide you to this truth and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always open our hearts and enlighten our minds to find the truth and to find our joy and happiness i mean assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace be upon you all